Alt cats old enough to catch their own prey gather here beneath the podcast for a clan meeting. Welcome to Paws and Claws, a podcast where we read the Warrior Cats books in chronological order. I'm Scout, joined by my co-host and hard little worker, Jillian. And today we will be discussing the Raven Paws Path graphic novel trilogy, as well as the third published super edition, Sky Clan's Destiny. Hi, Jill. I forgot that I I forgot that I wrote that intro for you, and I and I've I was just like been so busy. I was like, Pat, did Past Scout write that? Did I forget to delete? Have I, is this what I've already done? I was like, I was in a time <laughs> warp for a second. Hello. Yeah, I've just been so busy. You've been so busy. You got you got your your uh, extended contract. I think that happened since the last time we recorded. I think so, yeah. And if not, like, uh, at this moment, my uh, manager is currently on the other side of the world. So uh, it is my first, last week was my first week, like, not having my manager around to ask a bunch of questions. Yes. Of course, that was the week I got a lot of toughies at work, but it was Uh, good. It all worked out. It's always, it's always trial by fire, you know? It is. It is never not. There's never, there's never not some shit happening. It's always so. There's never not some shit. That's so true. It's always some sort of fucking temperature. <laughs> you got a bug well, flying we... around in your room? Or are you looking no, around the, at? the AC just came on. Oh, <laughs> sorry for calling you out. I just, I was like, is there a ghost in Jill's room? No, the AC just came on. I'm trying to like angle my body to get the best uh, hit. You gotta get, you gotta get, I gotta get that hit, bro. Oh, I need that dude. fucking hit. <laughs> Give me AC. a hit of that AC. That's so real. That is so real. You're so real That's for that. That's me every day. Oh, it's so but true. Why am I so hot all the time? Dude, I wish I knew. You know who doesn't have to worry about being too hot? Just kidding. They actually do talk about it being really hot in this book. They do talk about it being really hot in in the gorge. <laughs> it's the cats. It's the cats. Now, I will say, it does not seem Zelda is as affected as I am. Because mm-hmm. this cat is over here burrowing <laughs> under gigantic heavy fleece blankets oh my and sleeping goodness. under them all day i'm like are you not sweltering <laughs> this is like when i was growing up we had cats and, and we lived in places where uh we had wood stoves the cats would lay like directly oh God, yeah. next to the wood stove and i'm like you cannot be comfortable this is they can though because when uh back when i lived with my parents the old refrigerator, like the bottom of the refrigerator had like a heating oh. oil or something. Oh, yeah. It always gets hot under a refrigerator. It gets really hot under there. The cats would lay directly against the bottom of the refrigerator. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and it would be like, you got to move the cat to open the fridge door because they're laying right up flush to it. You got to kick me at like the football to get into your yeah. freaking it's woof just, It's up. wild to me with my woof <laughs> It's just wild to me how much... Like, Zelda has a lot of fur, and mm-hmm. she's over here like, yeah, I could be warmer, actually. I'm like, girl. Cats are no. <laughs> mysterious like that, you know? I don't know what yeah. it is. Do they just love to be really, really hot? Is it that they run colder than humans, or at least colder than me? But I when don't a think cat, they do. Because when a cat sits on me, I'm like, you're warm. This is a lot <laughs> yes. of, of, yeah. of, 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 like, heat radiating off of you in this little bundle. What is a cat's typical... How hot a cat? How hot cats get. (laughs) They're hotter than we are. It's 101 to 102.5. Damn, that's a lot hotter than we are. (laughs) That's like human fever levels of hotter than we are. That's why it's so warm when cats sit on you. That's why. That's why. This is what we've discovered. Anyway, so if these cats in this (laughs) book are saying it's hot... You know it's, it's hot. hot. <laughs> or it's that the humans were writing too much from a human perspective, kind of like when they talk about how the cats can't see in the dark. And I'm like, Aaron's hunter, the cats can see in the dark. <laughs> in the, the cats very much the see cats in the can dark. see in the dark. That is, that's in fact, like the whole point of cats. That's their whole thing. The, the Aaron's hunter <laughs> and uh, Wizards of the Coast both have Fucking, this problem. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who doesn't know that cats see better in the dark baffles my mind because that's like one of the first things i learned about cats (laughs) that is the that's the number one cat fact 
That's that's the number one cat fact is these fools, they love the dark. They love the dork. Should we talk um, about how the prey's running? Yeah. <laughs> We're so <laughs> silly today. We really are. <laughs> but yes, I would love to talk about how the prey is running because today I made a very delicious meal. <gasps> yes, tell me about it. Oh my god. Uh so listeners, we are recording today on the 17th of March. Uh, which, as you may know, is St. Patrick's Day. I don't really celebrate it except as an excuse to make a corned beef brisket and drink a couple of beers. Hell yeah. So I made a corned beef brisket for dinner with some cabbage and potatoes and carrots. And oh my God, I think that was the tenderest brisket I've ever made because I could not cut against the grain like you're supposed to. Oh, because it was just falling apart. apart. Wow. Yeah, I was looking at the pictures. It looks so tasty. It was so good. You know, it's something I only make once a year. And I think I perfected it with this one. So I'm very happy with it. Hell yeah. It was very good. And uh, probably part of the reason I'm so silly tonight is I'm just so full of brisket, guys. Full of brisket. I got so many potatoes in me. (laughs) What is that? Is it a... Is it an image of a shrimp where there's like an arrow pointing to it and it says like full of carrot? I don't know. It's or like, is it that moaning blowfish? Pufferfish. Full, full of blank. Full of blank. That's mm. not going to get you the results you want, dear. Full of, it's a cat. It is a cat. It's a cat. It's a cat okay. that says full of soup. That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, that sounds really good. We had uh, some friends of the family over. Uh, last night. They were supposed to come over the weekend before, but unfortunately, my dear father was feeling a little under the weather still. He had whatever his head cold was, uh, Mm. just was like one of those things that just went on forever. You know, one of them. Um, Yeah. So we had our friends over yesterday. Parents made a, uh, a roast chicken, a rosemary maple roast chicken. That sounds good. It's really tasty and it's really easy. I should, in fact, send you that recipe because it's... Uh, I'm not a huge rosemary person, but not I'm a give huge it a try. rosemary person. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not like a lot of rosemary. It's more that you, you have like some rosemary in with sort of the maple syrup basting uh, liquid that you make. And then you have sprigs of rosemary that go sort of inside of the chicken for the cooking. Um, so it's, okay. not, it's not heavy on rosemary. It's just like a real nice chicken. And dad made some real creamy mashed potatoes and I made a new recipe that was a a spinach and orzo salad uh with a like vinaigrette dressing and feta and cherry tomatoes and kalamata olives it was real nice delicious I I'm always trying to find because there's specific textures of like greens mm-hmm. when they're raw that I really don't like and so I'm I'm like constantly on the hunt it's my white whale to be like what is the greens in the salad that will will make me the happiest because oftentimes it's like I will eat this and I enjoy the flavor but there's like a texture thing that I'm not hot on um mm-hmm. but this was really nice you put the orzo in when it's still warm like fresh off of being boiled mm. and so it just slightly wilts the spinach a little bit so it takes away some of like that uh like fresh spinach the only way i can like sponginess i don't know there's like a very specific i I was gonna say specifically spinach is one of those i cannot do raw yeah i don't know what it is about raw spinach but it has a very specific thing it's spongy i agree that like yeah there's a different texture to it but this was uh with the between the vinaigrette and like the warm pasta sort of helping to wilt it a little bit it takes away some of the texture that i don't like and so it was really nice good uh i will say i am i am also with relation to salads parmesan crisps have been at this on sale at our grocery stores lately Ooh. Hell yeah. I love a Parmesan crisp in my salad. It Ooh. is a perfect crunch of texture in there. Anyway, Hell yeah. love, Hell love yeah. a Parmesan crisp. Love a Parmesan crisp. I love Parmesan. I do too. Parmesan's it's good. Really good. Cheese good. Cheese good. Cheese good. You ever just think about cheese? Man, we can't stop talking about food. Okay. <laughs> uh instead of instead of food we could talk about this cover that i want to talk about 
For yeah. once, we have a non-international cover that I want to rave about. This is the this is a absolutely gorgeous wraparound cover image done for the original printing by Wayne McLaughlin, who, if you grew up reading the Warrior Cats books and you saw those covers with the great paintings and like the little square in the middle that's similar to our cover art that I do, mm -hmm. those were all done by Wayne McLaughlin, who I believe passed away a few years ago, unfortunately. And that's one of the reasons that they shifted to a different artist, uh, like going forward with the reprints and stuff. And they sort of shifted to this other style. But this is just this incredible image that like we never we don't see most of it because the way that the Super Edition covers are is that they're they're like a blue book jacket usually mm -hmm. or like some color book jacket that has a little circle in it. And the circle it has like the cat's uh, sort of profile pick uh, popping out. Mm -hmm. And so we never really saw, I've never seen this before today. This is an incredible painting of Leaf Star who is standing in the canyon and there is this beautiful sunlight coming through the rocks. Uh, there is the river flowing over the rocks behind her. It really is gorgeous. It's like this beautiful sunset image. She's backlit gorgeously. Her whole, uh, like there's this, this beautiful soft airbrushing uh, backlighting, rim lighting on her that looks incredible. I love this piece, and it's a crime that like we never really don't saw get it. Them. Yeah, that, yeah, and that we don't get these anymore. I agree. Sorry, now I'm looking up Wayne McLaughlin on Wikipedia. He illustrated for Audubon. Yes, that's right. I was gonna say he did bird shit, right? Yeah, he was a big bird. Audubon, National Geographic. This is so cool. He was a really cool. Uh, artist and I miss him. Wow. I'm just looking at some of his stuff on Google Images now. Like he did this one for Sporting Classics Daily that is like this puma in a cave snarling and it is so freaking cool. Oh hell yeah. I'm looking at this. This rules. There's this <laughs> there's a fish here that I love. <laughs> it's just like he did like a like a billy bass ass fish. Oh my um, god, yes. One of my all-time wow. favorites of his is definitely the yellow fang portrait of her like Oh gosh, her with the flower. With the yes. flower and she's got all those little scars on her face. She looks so haggard and it's just so well. It like such a incredible soft uh touch with his paintings. Yeah. Wow, he really did just go so hard. He did. Oh, I also love his painting of Barley and Ravenpaw, where Barley's like sleeping, sneaping on Ravenpaw's back. Yeah. They're so cute. We're going to talk about them today. We should probably get back we to, the, are. to the show. We get to talk about our boys. Our boys. They're so gay. Y'all, they're so gay. <laughs> <laughs> should I should I hop into the summer? You got anything else for the yeah. Prairie Ribbon? Or? No, I'm just staring at some of Wayne McLaughlin's work. Yeah, just just looking at that. Just think about those, those Damn, beans. I would get literally every piece of Warriors art he did as a print. It Same. all fucks. It's so good. It's all so good. <laughs> all right, summary. Uh, we got we got some we got a long summary today, dear listeners. Just uh, uh, buckle in. We got a lot of stuff to cover. In Ravenpaw's path, we follow the former Thunder Clan apprentice and his best friend Barley. The two live happily and unbothered as barn cats, but their routine is interrupted when one winter night, a group of loners seeks shelter led by a Tom named Willie, who needs a warm place for his mate to have her kits. Ravenpaw becomes fast friends with the visitors, but their presence unsettles Barley, and he's happy to see the back of them when they finally decide to move on. Shortly thereafter, a fire breaks out. Barley and Ravenpaw free the farm dogs from the blaze and make it out safely, but half the barn is destroyed, leaving them vulnerable. They're unprotected when the loners, who Barley now recognizes as former Blood Clan cats, return and overpower the duo, chasing them off and claiming the farm as their own territory. Outnumbered, Ravenpaw and Barley seek aid from Thunder Clan, but discover upon their arrival that, while they are welcomed, the clan is also stretched thin due to raids from another colony of Blood Clan survivors. 
Ravenpaw realizes Barley, who grew up in Blood Clan before deserting, might have information that the clan could use to turn the tides on their attackers. But Barley is reluctant to revisit his traumatic past. Eventually, he opens up to Ravenpaw, and the two visit Barley's sister Violet, now a kitty pet after escaping Blood Clan with Barley in youth, to form a plan of action with Firestar and the rest of Thunder Clan. When they confront Blood Clan, they discover Barley's other two littermates. The deadbeat brothers, Hoot and Jumper, are the ones attempting to lead this Blood Clan revival. The siblings confront each other, and Barley reveals his brothers as feckless pretenders, scattering the remnants of Blood Clan once more. With that menace taken care of, Firestar is now free to form an elite team of his best warriors to help the barn cats drive out their own intruders. But when they arrive at the barn, they discover Willie's ranks have swelled, including the return of Hoot and Jumper. With some quick thinking from Ravenpaw and a surprising unspoken allyship with the farm dogs, our heroes are able to drive out the rogues and reclaim the farm. However, Barley's brothers appeal to his good nature, and he offers them a chance to stay and earn their keep. But the Toms continue to be lazy and vindictive, and it doesn't take long for Barley to realize that they have never and will never change their ways. He banishes them, and with them, the last of his past. Now, once more, it's just him and Ravenpaw. Two cats chilling on a farm, exactly the way they both like it. In Sky Clan's Destiny, we return to the Gorge and the continued growing pains of the revived Fifth Clan. Leafstar is happy to see their numbers growing and routines being formed, but is frustrated by the way her leadership decisions are sometimes doubted by her warriors, including her deputy Sharpclaw. They clash especially over daylight warriors, kitty pets who live and learn as clan cats by day but return to their two legs at night. While Leafstar believes this unorthodox practice is the key to Sky Clan's survival, the full time clan cats struggle to accept the part timers as true warriors, leading to a troubling divide. Her worries are exacerbated when the echoes of ancient Sky Clan deliver a prophecy in her dreams. This is the leaf bear of my clan. Greenleaf will come, but it will bring even greater storms than these. Sky Clan will need deeper roots if it is to survive. As she ponders the prophecy, newcomers arrive. Familiar two-leg place strays who helped Firestar and Sandstorm during their journey to the gorge. The loners, led by a tom named Stick, claim they've come to learn new skills from the clan. Though Leafstar is unsure about them, suspecting an ulterior motive, Stick's group nonetheless adapts to clan duties very well. And Sharpclaw takes to them immediately, often to the point of undermining his leader's authority in their favor. When a Sky Clan patrol discovers a two-leg dumping ground infested with rats, they fear the return of the eldritch horror they defeated previously. The visiting cats help the clan cats formulate a plan to defeat them before their numbers swell. Sharpclaw convinces Leafstar to launch the attack before the Daylight Warriors arrive, and though they are triumphant, the victory is soured by the Daylight Group's exclusion, which drives an additional wedge into their fracturing unity. Leafstar's misgivings about Sharpclaw's actions are brought extra credence when the Daylight Warrior Billy Storm confides in her that he saw the deputy leading a patrol through Two Leg Place with the visiting cats. Despite this, she resolves to trust Sharpclaw and not question him on the matter. It is around this time that Leafstar tries to connect with the high-strung Shrewtooth, a relatively new recruit to Sky Clan with an undisclosed past. While out on a hunting patrol together, they stumble across the nest of the two-leg where Petal Nose and her kits had once been trapped, and Shrewtooth experiences a trauma-induced shutdown revealing he was a victim of the man's continued abuse. Incensed at this human's actions, and again aided by Stick's knowledge of human life, the clan hatches a Toy Story-esque plan to scare him out of touching another cat ever again. 
This time, the Daylight Warriors commit to a night in the gorge to take part in the operation, but again, Sharpclaw forces Leafstar to act sooner than intended. And again, they are successful in their goal, but put additional strain on their community in the process. Leafstar, running damage control, tries to show the Daylight Warriors they are welcome by spending more time with them. Billy Storm becomes her close confidant and advisor, and the pair realize they've developed feelings for each other. When Leafstar confides in her medicine cat, Echo Song, that she hopes to take Billy Storm as a mate, Echo Song entreats her to reconsider, stating that a leader's destiny requires her to be focused on the care of her clan above her own desires. Leafstar storms off, but the seeds of doubt are adequately sown in her mind, leaving her to push Billy Storm away the next time he comes to her with doubts about Sharpclaw and the visitors. Soon after this, an unsettling wailing is heard farther up the gorge. When they go to investigate, they discover a two-legged girl has fallen down the cliffside and broken her leg, leaving her stranded. The full-time cats are dubious about trying to help the human, but Leafstar and the Daylight Warriors are able to track down her home in the two-leg place, and the divided clan comes together to lay a breadcrumb trail of items from the girl's backpack, leading her parents in the proper direction and facilitating her rescue. The clan celebrates and seems more united than ever before, but Leafstar's pleasure in the outcome is short-lived. She finally catches Sharpclaw and Stick leading a secret patrol. She follows and confronts them, learning that the true reason Stick's group traveled to the Gorge was to seek aid in running a rival colony out of their territory back home. Sharpclaw has been taking small nightly patrols to Two Leg Place, so the street cats can teach the clan cats about navigating a city safely. While Leafstar is frustrated with Sharpclaw's continued independence, she is sympathetic to Stick's plight. And after Echo Song receives a message from Star Clan warning her of a faraway threat that must be met before it can invade their territory, the leader resolves to organize a patrol for their aid. Throughout the book, there have been flashbacks into Stick's past. We watch as his group is bullied out of their hunting grounds by Dodge and his group, and we see the deterioration of the relationship between Stick and his daughter Red, who drifts away after falling in love with one of Dodge's allies. Furious, Stick disowns Red and resolves to find the clan cats for aid in taking back control of his life. Now, in the present, as they ready to confront Dodge, Stick's pleasant disposition melts away into a vengeful snarl. When the fight starts to Leafstar's horror, Stick commands the other city cats to kill their enemies instead of merely driving them out. Chaos ensues and Leafstar loses her first life. In the space between lives, the cats of Star Clan urge her to pursue the destiny of her clan her way and no one else's. She returns to her body and demands the fight cease, insisting that the two groups can put aside their differences without more death. Stick claims he could never reconcile with someone who stole his daughter, but Red reiterates that no one stole her. She made her own choices. In denial and rage, Stick lashes out at Red's mate, but Red steps between them and he kills his own daughter instead. The shock of this twist snaps the cats out of their fury, and again Leafstar implores the rival groups to reconcile, to understand each other, before announcing it's time for her clan to return home. With new resolve and having learned much over the past few moons, Leafstar asserts her authority with Sharpclaw. Her deputy confides he means no harm, challenging her only to be sure she believes in her own convictions. She responds with certainty, saying that in no uncertain terms, the Daylight Warriors are an indisputable part of her vision for SkyClan. She will walk her own path as leader, alike but different from the clans of the forest. And, she realizes, her vision can include a family. She moves to share her thoughts with Billy Storm as the clan nears the gorge. Hell yeah. That's a big one. It's a big one. It is a big one. And, you know, we're going to talk about it. But first, I want to talk about everybody's 
favorite guy. The guys. AKA my favorite guy. Is Ravenpaw. It's just my little boy Ravenpaw. Ye old childhood crush. Hell yeah. Let's start with overall thoughts. Yeah. Overall thoughts. I think it's a a good little manga series. Yeah. Yeah. My overall thoughts are about the same. I I don't think that it's necessarily like groundbreaking for me in the arc of the Warriors books, but it was a really fun read and I love to see more of Ravenpaw and Barley always. And I did enjoy seeing sort of this um, continued fallout of the consequences of like what happened with Blood Clan. I thought was really nice to see because it does tend to feel very much like that story was resolved really quickly at the end of the first arc. Um, And so it was nice to get a little bit of expansion there and sort of see some of the remnants of that whole ordeal. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it is groundbreaking, but I think what it definitely does is like take who I perceived to be a fan favorite. I don't know if he's actually a fan favorite, but he feels like a fan favorite. He feel, He's a fan favorite in our hearts if he's not a fan yeah. favorite. Take like this this character that is is well liked and just give them a little side adventure and just like yeah. let people know like, hey, they're doing good. Especially given like what is to come in the new prophecy, like just a little reassurance like, hey, your old guy's doing all right. He's doing okay over there, you know? Um, and it gives us like a really fun look into his and Barley's relationship. Um, yeah. I just think they're so sweet. <laughs> I'm going to cry about these gay cats. They're every so time, cute. Every time Ravenpaw is like, Barley is my best friend. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> best friend, you say? <laughs> they love each other so much. They love each other so much. Like, just the way that, like, here's the thing. Ravenpaw putting up with Barley's siblings oh my is God. the realest thing. Because he's like, oh my God, they're so annoying. They're so but annoying, but... They're my boyfriend's family, so I gotta put up with them. Yes! Oh. Like, you know if they had not been related to him, Barley, or Ravenpaw would have none of that shit. But he's just like, yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. Ugh. And there's even a little bit of the inverse of that in the beginning, though mm-hmm. it, uh, I guess it turns out similarly, uh, but with Ravenpaw really being like excited about having these kits around and like enjoying yeah. the company of these, these traveling cats and Barley being like, I'm not so sure about this, but Ravenpaw is really happy. So like, I'm going to let it keep, keep happening, but I'm yeah. not hot on this. Yeah. I really like all of the little, uh, like gestures to the fact that Barley is like not much of a like social cat. He's like, I got my guy that I like and like, that's all I need. I don't want to be socializing with all these other people. I'm just here for me and Ravenpaw. And he's so real for that. Barley is the partner who is like Morse coding with blinks across the function. (laughs) Like, can we go home now? (laughs) I want to be in bed by eight o'clock. <laughs> that's that's me. That's his vibe. And you know what? I get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, comics wise, once again, really nice looking color edition of this comic. Oh, I didn't. I did not read the color edition. I had the uh, the black and whites. The black and whites. Yeah, they did the. Uh, I'm assuming it's a color reprint. Um, yeah. Uh, and it just looked really nice. Uh, there's a heavier use of like cross hatching and hatching in here than in some of the later uh, graphic novels that I think looks really nice. It's just like generally with the ink work and then it looks really nice with the colors. Um, good looking, good looking set of, of comics overall. I agree. I really, I mean, again, you know, I really love James Berry's art. Mm-hmm. I think he does really fun cat expressions. In particular, I just love how fluffy Barley is. Barley's so fluffy. I love Ravenpaw's little smiles. I just think they're so cute. He's just a happy little guy. He's the cutest little guy. But yeah, I I really enjoy the art. I really, the, was just about to hold this up to the fucking camera. (laughs) I mean, it's for me. this shit. It's for Uh, me, though. But the the scene of them going to the moonstone yes, where it is like I all silhouetted. That. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so cool, and you can just see their eyes. Oh, I love that shit. Yeah, that was really good. There's a lot of really nice like graphic 
silhouette work and generally like James James mm-hmm. L. Barry is just really good at the simplification side of of comics. Yeah, um, I agree. I'm a big fan. I see here you wrote down the scene about the chickens. Yeah, so there's this that scene. That was fucked. That was <laughs> fucked, right? <laughs> that was wild. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's this scene um, of the uh, of like Willie's group, these sort of ex Blood Clan cats that come uh, to to stay in the barn for a while. And there's sort of this uh, subplot of Ravenpaw being like, no, we don't fuck with the chickens. Like those are the farmer's chickens, and we don't fuck with them. We hunt the mice, and that's it. We don't eat the chickens. We don't eat the chicks. And Willie is like, is for me. Uh, and him and his fools go in there and just like massacre the chickens. And it's a <laughs> really fun by massacre we mean like all of them they are just smacking baby chickens left and right it's really (laughs) upsetting it is like the the uh it's black so you don't really like it's not it doesn't it doesn't evoke uh or or like it doesn't it's the, the way like in the video game Danganronpa, they made all of the blood pink to like get it past a specific kind of sensor in Japan. There's this black uh, like blood. It's not red like blood, but it is the chicken blood. And it's like all over the place. Yeah, it's um, it's it a rough just... scene, too. And, you know, the, the a similar thing happens in the other book with the rabbit, like just cats fucking with two leg pets when mm-hmm. the cats who are doing nothing wrong get the yes. short end of it yes. and that just makes me so upset because like I know the two legs can't understand they and I know the cats know that but like it's so upsetting mm-hmm. <laughs> when these cats are like we've been living here for like three years and we have been very good stewards of these chickens and then all of a sudden these other cats come in and start killing the chickens and now suddenly we're getting blamed for it and I'm yeah. like have a little faith. It's fine. Have faith in your cats. Have faith. Have faith in your cats. Although I say the same thing, and three years into me owning Zelda, she all of a sudden killed a baby bird. So <sighs> cats do. Cats do. What, be cats. Who can, who can say? Who can say? Zelda got a little bit of that blood clan in her. Yeah. Other other uh, upsetting things, but but very evocative. Barley's trauma, oh, God. like flashback dreams. I yeah. think the the whole um, arc of Barley dealing with his trauma throughout the story was really effective to me. Mm-hmm. I agree. I really liked seeing the effects that. Uh, like sort of expanding on the negative effects that Blood Clan had, not just for the forest cats, but for other cats that were affected by, you know, their presence and the things that Scourge did and the uh, hostile community that he and his cats fostered. Yeah. I really liked his sister, Barley's sister, Violet. I liked her a lot. I I loved the fucking deadbeat boys. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> they're they're two deadbeat twin fucking <laughs> brothers. They one of them's got like a what is it? Like an underbite? Yeah. And he's got and he's just so like it's Does so one of them have like a little mohawk? I think so. I got to go back and look, but it's so fun to me like how very clearly they like look exactly like barley, but yeah. there's something that makes them like not not quite barley the not barleys yeah and that they were what were their fucking names that they took like ice and snipe or something i can't remember uh let's see i think one of them was jumper well their hoot and jumper are their names but the uh like the their oh 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 their pseudonyms that they were trying yes. to use to to rule they're, over they're old badass, blood clan they're, they're badass, badass names, names. Uh, no, his brother does not have a mohawk. He's got a torn ear. Mm -hmm. Snake and ice. Snake and ice. I was close with snipe. It kind of like gives, um, (laughs) it, it really gives like kids pretending to be gangsters yes it does it absolutely does that's so I'm be it ice. ice like okay your it's name so is real. your name is robert and you're five but all right <laughs> oh god 
Um, I I got really excited a couple of times because we had a mention of some characters that we're going to be seeing in the new <gasps> prophecy. Yeah, I was so excited when I heard Crow Kit. I was so excited to see little tiny Crow Kit. I was so excited was to so see strongly. He's so little, and he's trying to climb the Great Rock. Little fucking always causing trouble but causing trouble yeah. came out the womb causing trouble uh and leaf kit and squirrel kit are also so cute they're they're just little babies they're just little babies yeah i it, it's always really exciting to me seeing glimpses of cats that like we will get more of later on. Yeah, I'm always doing DiCaprio pointing meme like, hey, literally <laughs> Beyonce. <laughs> um, Beyonce. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I think those are so fun. Just the li- and like, you know, getting to see the little snippets of Thunder Clan. Yeah. Uh, in between Firestar's quest and the new prophecy is really nice. Mm hmm. I, yeah, I love really that. Like I like. I just, I just like his friendship with the clan. I just think it's really nice and cute. It is. And I love that they are able to just go to the clan and Firestar's like, yeah, you guys are my bros. Yeah, you can stay as long as you want. And Marley's like, please don't like make me stay very much longer. I can't take this. <laughs> please, there's so many cats. Please. I'm so tired. Ravenclaw. Um, I did want to mention real, real, real quick. First of all, it was fun to see Brambleclaw as like part of the elite team. Um, yeah, but uh, I forgot to mention this last time. Not only does Hawkpaw have the triangle eyebrows that Tiger Star had in the Tiger Star and Sasha manga, but so does Brambleclaw, and I believe that that is consistent throughout like all of the rest of the comics, and Love it just that. it makes me so happy. It's absolutely like I, I am so delighted by it. Beautiful. Um, and then otherwise, uh, aside from saying these dogs are bros and these cats are gay, I don't have much more to say except for like, I'd like to have a little discussion about Ravenpaw's name because we were talking about that a little bit in the discord. Yes, we were talking about it in the discord. Um, so there is, you know, uh, much to be said about the fact that Ravenpaw does not have a warrior cat or does not have a warrior name. He still has his apprentice name. Uh, and the the people are divided. <laughs> uh, Scout, I would love to hear your side. Uh, yeah, I I have always felt like uh, Ravenpaw has done so much for the clans across the uh like course of his life, and I think that uh, up to this point, we have never seen him say anything like, "No, I wouldn't." I wouldn't want to change my name. I wouldn't want to be something different. And I know we had mentioned in a previous discussion, a previous episode, that maybe there was something along those lines in this in this manga. And so I was keeping an eye out for that and I didn't see it. And so I still, I think I come down on that it's a bit of a cop out that they never gave him a warrior name. I think there were several opportunities where a ceremony could have been done. I think we've had some already. We could have some in the future. And I think that there is enough of like a history with Ravenpaw in the clans themselves that it just seems like the the respectful thing to do to be like hey we we recognize that you have come a long way you're not just like a, an apprentice you're not a kid anymore that's kind of my feeling on it yeah i get that i will say it's not this in which there is a canon like him saying something like that, uh, it is in his novella. Oh, I had like completely like mind wiped out of my brain that we were even getting a Ravenpaw novella. I literally mm-hmm. wrote it in the seasons, but there, I mean, yeah. admittedly, there's a lot of titles that I'm that I was juggling when I was oh, figuring God, yeah. out all the seasons. Uh, so yeah, I will say there is. Uh, he does make a statement about it in his in the novella for him. Okay, but I. I'm kind of on the other side. All right. A little bit. Yeah. I feel like he is best friends with Firestar. And like, I know, and this is me as a person who is very into speculative fan content, a lot of <laughs> headcanoning and fan fiction and, you know, imagining missing scenes. Like, to me, Firestar would have offered it. And if Firestar would have offered it, I don't feel like Ravenpaw would have accepted. I feel like to him, like he is Ravenpaw. Like he just 
is it it is reflective of his time in the clans, but it is reflective of the fact that he has no intention to be part of them anymore. I like that. Yeah, that 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 is also, I think, a completely uh, valid and good read. Yeah. And which I feel like was kind of supported a little bit in the manga books where, you know, Barley's all worried, like, you know, you can go back if you want. Mm-hmm. And Firestone's like, you could come back if you want. And he's like, no, like, I used to be a clan cat. And that is part of who I wh- who I am. Like, that is part of my past. But like, that's not my future. So to me, it is kind of reflective of the fact that like he still honors and values where he came from, but it is not the kind of cat he wants to be. I like that read a lot. Yeah, I like I like that. I care very much about this gay little cat. (laughs) He's a good gay little cat. Of course, you know, everybody's got opinions. Uh, Even the errands, I believe, have some opinions that are perhaps a little bit less. I'm going to say it justified than mine (laughs) uh but (laughs) you know i do love to speculate like and a lot of people do like what ravenpaw's warrior name would be if he got one yeah i think that's even something i've i think even cherith baldry herself has a uh like a headcanon ravenpaw Mm -hmm. warrior name and we talked about that it was the one that i also had as a child Mm -hmm. um yeah, uh, I do see a lot of people like, oh, if I if I were to name Ravenpaw, I would name him this kind of thing. Yeah. So like it is definitely not a, an uncommon thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the thing that honestly, like my my take is almost more fueled by just like the comments that the errands have made than even the fiction mm-hmm. itself, because the errands are so often like, I don't know, we just never did it. We just never like, mm, we just never came up. And so because he's Ravenpaw, like he's Ravenpaw. I don't know what his name would be. And I'm like, come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Put some respect on his name. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I'm like, I feel like my take is more like trying to dig into character rather mm-hmm. than as the errands which is completely that's like the thing we do you know you yeah, you find that you dig in you dig in to make the text richer for for yourself like yeah. it, you in a collective sense not you not exactly. jill, jill isn't not the just, only person that does that <laughs> no i am i am the only person out here Jill is doing o- warrior cats literary analysis only person not the even me one. i not on this scout. podcast i don't even do it I don't know. I've never read a book in my life. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's all I've got to say about uh, Raven Palm Barley, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Very cute cats. Oh, Very wait, cats. I do have one last thing to say. Yes. I know this probably should go in the fan corner, but I wanted to share it here because we were talking about it in the Discord. Back uh, around Valentine's Day, the Warrior Cats official website put up a bunch of Warrior Cats ship fan art on their page and one of them is Ravenpaw and Barley and it is very cute. Oh. Um, so suck on that haters. <laughs> no That's homophobes all. allowed here. No homo no homophobes for the cats. I love that. I do just want to reiterate I really liked the the dogs that like yeah. the, the dogs so the cats helped the dogs not get consumed by the fire that consumed the barn and then later the dogs came and like helped them chase off the bad cats and I just liked that that broness despite mm-hmm. uh, the language barrier because the dogs definitely do not speak cat and the cats definitely do not speak dog. It's very funny. <laughs> it was very it was very funny and very cute. Uh, that's my last thing. Love that. Sky Clan's Destiny? Oh, baby, let's talk about it. All right. I love Sky Clan. I love Sky Clan. Give me, give me your overall thoughts for this one. Overall thoughts. As I was reading this, I was like, okay, this is familiar. I have read this one before. Oh, fun. so I think this is the last super edition I read before my very long break mm-hmm. from Warrior Cats. Mm-hmm. I personally like. It is not my favorite super edition by any means, Mm -hmm. but I think it's a fun one. Mm -hmm. And I think it it works as a super edition because until much, much later, uh, as we will learn, Sky Clan was just kind of like in Firestar's quest and then not talked about. Yeah, they didn't. They really didn't bring them up for a long time. So, you know, to me, it was nice to like just have a little like. Oh, hey, it's my favorite little guys over there. there they are. What are they up to? Hi. <laughs> um, what about you? I 
loved reading this all the way up until like the last two chapters. Yep. And then I was like, man, the ending really sucks. Yeah. And I agree. That sucks because up until that point, I was reading it and I was like, this is really cool. It's doing like a lot of things that they haven't done before in Mm -hmm. in the books. And it's like exploring a lot of stuff that I love when they explore, like, you know, the ways that the code could be different, the ways that the code isn't always applicable, like a different way of dealing with the clans. That is exactly what I wanted to talk about. And That's like the old, that is like the thing I have not been able to stop thinking about. I was like having the best time. And then we got to the end and I was like, that's the end? And it's that? Yeah. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, I feel like the end was rushed and put in there because they were like, we can't not have an action adventure scene in our action, like an action adventure climax in our action adventure series. <laughs> Yeah, I they don't were like, know. we we are doing so much slice of life stuff. We got we got to do some some big fighting. Otherwise, we're gonna lose them. And it's like, no. But the thing is that the big fight was also not a good. It wasn't a good big fight. It was such like a it nothing wasn't. big fight too. Ugh. Yeah, we'll talk about it more as we go through. And mm-hmm. I think that I think that like right after I finished reading it a couple of weeks back, because we unfortunately had to push this recording a, a little ways, I was like so down. Um, like I was so high reading it and then I finished it and I was mm-hmm. so down and having a couple of weeks to sit with it. I think I've, I'm like remembering and bringing more to the forward, like forefront of my brain, the stuff that I really liked about it. And so I'm a little bit higher on it than I was like That's immediately yeah. after reading it. But yeah, the ending is just really like unconscionably not good. Yeah, it's it feels very rushed and shoehorned in. It does not feel like a proper ending to the narrative that they have been telling. No. Wild shit. Yeah. But I do want to just talk about, and this kind of goes with your first point here on the notes. I just really liked the slice of life stuff. It was so like, good. It was so fun. It's like this book, and I feel like maybe this is what subconsciously got me, like, hoping for things that never happened in Dawn of the Clans. Mm-hmm. Like, it's literally just like, okay, we are a new clan. There's no other clans here. Like, how are we supposed to do things? Yeah. And so it is very much like you just really get to know all of these characters because there is such a small cast. Yeah. And like, it's a really just... tight cast. Like It really is. It's not only small, but each character is very clearly defined. They're all mm-hmm. very like you can tell them apart from each other, which is a thing that we do not always get in these books. Absolutely not. They all have such distinct personalities. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of really... Um, it feels like a lot of my Minor characters get character arts. Yeah, we it. have a whole True Tooth arc, and I was so fucking excited about that. I loved that. I loved that. I love True Tooth so much. I too. I was at the beginning of the book, I was like, I'm fucking obsessed with this jumpy bean. What's up with him? Why is he so freaked out? And then they were like, here's why he's so freaked out. It's the trauma. And I was like, I mean, I should have seen that coming, but it did still make me cry. <laughs> But yeah, I really, I, Shrewtooth's little arc was good. Tiny Paw has a little bit of an arc. Snookpaw's arc. Snookpaw's arc like, was also great. Yeah, it was all really, really good. Like, every character Even got. Even fucking MacGyver and Harvey Moon get, like, a little yeah. arc. <laughs> fucking it's like every cat gets a little moment where it's like, you get to kind of see their inner life. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Like, I don't think it would work for a full series, but like for a super edition that is focused specifically on the building of a new clan, I think it really like shows where they can shine. Yes. The sort of slice of life stuff, because I know I've been harsh on that before, about like we are spending way too much time on the minute details of this one cat's life. But if you're focusing on all of the group and how they are kind of interacting, it makes it a lot more fresh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I I agree. There is a a definite um way that this book feels as though each of the cats are having an arc, uh whereas with slice of life stuff previously, a lot more often it almost feels more like we are seeing a tableau that's just like there. Um, yeah. And doesn't see a lot of actual movement of the character from one state to another state, but is more just like 
here's a character. And I think that is part of the difference. Mm hmm. I agree. There's just so many little great moments in the intro here with uh, Tiny Paw using her tail to flick Bounce Paw's ear right side out right before they go up for their warrior naming ceremony. Also, shout out to Tiny Paw. Your name may be tiny, but your spirit is not is like the cosmic opposite of how I'm always saying that I'm not short, but I am just a little guy. And I love that. <laughs> it's very good. I just true tooth. Yeah, Shrew Tooth's backstory got got me, and also, like, he's just so relatable. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah, dude, I totally get it. The panic attack was so real, my guy. I like, know. he's just, he's a really, he, like, fully has, like, a triggering episode in the forest, and none of the cats, like, judge him for no, it No, yeah. They're all like, oh my god, he had such a hard life, no wonder he didn't want to talk about it. And they're like, are, are you okay, bud? They're all trying to um, help him. I mean, it raised my cry counter for the first time in a while. And like, this hell is... yeah. This is a... I mean, not hell yeah that you cried, no, but, like, but hell yeah. But yeah, like, it was really effective and really affecting. The whole story about how he, like, climbed out of the chimney. I know. Bro. It was really, like, evocative, too. It was really, really just... Shrew Tooth's whole story was... Yeah. I was obsessed with him. I love him so much. I... I My For You page on TikTok has just been a lot of, like, cats that were taken back to the shelter for, like, stupid reasons. Oh. So I've been very emotional about people mistreating cats lately, and it just... Man, it got me. Yeah. I'm just like, I just want to give my cat a kiss on the head oh God, because I'm like, oh, the poor kitty. <laughs> I'm like, I know you're fake, but, but I know yeah. for real. Like, it's, and the, yeah. the, the the like scenes of Petal Nose um, and True Tooth uh, kind of bonding over this this yeah. shared trauma that they had with this with this abusive uh, human that they they didn't realize that they had that connection and sort and being able to like the way Petal Nose just like sort of was able to wordlessly understand what Shrew Tooth was going through it was mm -hmm. really like it it was really good it was just really well portrayed I felt like yeah I agree and a really cool and creative way to bring heavier and more difficult to talk about topics like mm -hmm. trauma into a narrative that is in a children's book you know like it yeah, felt I agree. very approachable and like something that would uh make these concepts easier for a younger child to understand if they were reading the book i agree i think it's also just to completely go on to the other side it's also a funny book it like is. there's just a lot of like silly moments with these cats Every time Fallow Fern <laughs> is on screen with cat. her fucking four kids that won't shut up. <laughs> Clover Tail just being like, I am so ready to get these kits out of my goddamn stomach. Please, I have to. This cat is so tired of being pregnant. And when she goes and curls up next to the... Uh, oh my god, and she says that's the best sleep the I've had in moons. Yeah, she's like, oh my god, this is the best sleep I've had in moons. And she's like literally na laying next to a dying child. <laughs> like, oh, thank god, it's so quiet, I can sleep. Oh. She's so funny. I just, Yeah, there's just a lot of, of very fun, silly little moments that I really enjoyed. It felt very... I don't know. It just felt real. It felt like a really good book. Yeah. Uh, Shrew Tooth also has a moment in the beginning where he's like, we're under attack. And it's oh like my God. two guys that come to the clan every day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's like, Shrew Tooth, bro. And he's like, sorry. Sorry, the sun was in my eyes. <laughs> the sun was in my eyes. Yeah, and uh, the again with the there's there's Harvey Moon and MacGyver, two of the Daylight Warriors, and they have like they're just like always trying to one up each other and and fuck around and like oh my god yeah goof off and uh, to the point where Leaf Star is like you're banished for one moon and you can't come back until you've thought about what you've done <laughs> and then they come Literally back and they're extended like extended timeout and they're like. <laughs> We're sorry. We really want to be in the clan. We're sorry we were fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> we were just, we were goofing too much. We're sorry. Uh, Fallow Fern's kits are hilarious, They're too. So the funny. way they literally take 
anything and they're like we're gonna make a game out of this they and they're they're so funny they're so funny there is a great there was a great scene too that actually like was kind of a a more serious moment as well where Mm -hmm. it was like the kids were doing some sort of game that was like about the conflict between the day the daylight warriors and the full-time warriors Mm -hmm. um and uh, Leafstar has this great like thought in her head that's like tomorrow it'll be a different game like things will move on and this will it will yeah. it will change and uh, and I thought that was really nice so the kids the kids were like not only were they really funny but they were used really effectively to like move the narrative forward yeah like that's what I'm talking about with the ways that this book was like really cleverly uh, like just put together and that I was really mm-hmm. impressed by and why it's just so weird how bad the ending is <laughs> yeah exactly I really enjoyed Leaf Star. Just, I mean, I'm, I'm a Leaf Star stan mm-hmm. first and foremost. Um, I really enjoyed like seeing her different relationships with the cats in her clan. Like her trying so damn hard <laughs> to like include uh, the Daylight Warriors in things, and like everyone being like, "You're favoriting them," and she's like, "I'm literally not. I'm literally, I'm literally just-, just trying to like." Make sure that you guys don't fucking wreck their shit all the time. Um, But like her, the relationship she has with Korra. Yes. And her like kind of rocky relationship with Echo Song was really like fun to to kind of read about. Like they trust each other, but they are constantly kind of like getting at odds. Yeah. On like what's best for the clan. Mm -hmm. With Sharp Claw too. Um, Yes, with Sharp Claw too. And I just really enjoyed like Leaf Star as representing kind of the way Sky Clan is as a whole. Like she's not right and Sharp Claw's not right. There's not really a correct way of doing things. There's just multiple ways of doing it. Yeah. Um, because like it is really difficult to say, like, oh well, Echo Song is completely in the right. She should be training Freckle Paw because Freckle Paw wants to become a medicine cat. But like you know, Frecklepaw made a commitment and clearly Ebony Claw is feeling like a little bit bummed out about the way that she's being treated. And like, you know, she she deserves to have those feelings, yeah. uh, you know, addressed. And there's also there there is like a genuine worry about Frecklepaw being a daylight warrior medicine cat. Yeah. Like that is a reasonable thing to be unsure about if that would be, you know, something that Frecklepaw could uh, conceivably like take on as a responsibility. Yeah, exactly. So it's very much like, you know, you can't really say Leaf Star is completely correct or Echo Song was completely correct. It was very, and I feel like that just kind of reflected the way Sky Clan seems to be as a clan because, like, the thing I really loved was them seeing, like, hey, you know, we need to follow a warrior code, but it doesn't have to be the same one that the others follow because they don't have other clans to worry about. Yeah, there's a lot of things that it is like, we are a clan, but we are intrinsically different from the other clans because of our history and because of what has happened throughout like our our life as sky clan yeah. across across generations and and where we all came from as the current sky clan like none of us are fully born and bred clan cats like we're all a bunch of misfits from all over the place like who kind of came together uh in this essay i will explain why sky clan resonates so deeply with the lgbtq community <laughs> Um, (laughs) that's jokes but also I am just realizing some things about myself Mm. like oh (laughs) Jill your favorite character was Ravenpaw and your favorite clan was Sky Clan like Mm. hey bud (laughs) got some uh, some sense of the other going on over here but I really enjoyed like especially how she's you know making new traditions of leaving uh, some prey out for Star Clan yeah how they do different sorts of gatherings and using a gathering not as all the clans come and share their news, but as like a public forum. Yes, I loved the public forum thing. Holy shit. That She's like, ruled. okay, who's got issues? Yeah, who's... Bring them up now and we'll take care yeah, of it. Yeah, what do we like, got? What, who's got something like, to whoa, say? Whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck? We don't do that shit, <laughs> warriors. <laughs> it was great. Your boss tells you what to do and you do it. <laughs> but no, I really enjoyed that. And, you know, her kind of 
adjusting the way at the end that the twi- the daylight warriors kind of are going to be able to function like you know we have to make it fair to them but we also have to make it fair to us and the cats that like are here permanently uh and just her also saying like hey you know the other clans may frown upon a female leader having kids but like this is my fucking clan yeah who <laughs> like, the fuck is here to tell me to tell me i can't do this who's gonna who who's gonna make a fuss but if it, it really feels like, and I think this is part of the reason why I just really liked Sky Clan a lot as well, not just, you know, the me being me reasons, but you know, I've always had my issues with <laughs> parts of the Warrior Code. Yeah. And I feel like Sky Clan is really the first ones who are like, okay, this isn't working. So we're going to change it. Yeah. And what I am saying is Leaf Star should become president of the United States. Um, <laughs> on this platform, she will get rid of antiquated laws that no longer serve us uh, and bring in a more modern concept of what we as a society should be doing. Thank you. This is my platform. I'm running on Leaf Star 2024. <laughs> You have my vote. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Mates for medicine cats. Mates for medicine cats. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've talked about it quite a bit here, but I really love like the whole concept of the Daylight Warriors, the Halftime Warriors, mm-hmm. and how strongly Leafstar feels about it. Like, this is really, I really want to do this. Like, I understand that you think that it's not a good idea sharp claw but like Mm -hmm. i feel very strongly about this and i'm gonna stick to those convictions i really love that she sticks with it i do too and like she compromises she's like no you know what you are right there are concerns Mm -hmm. so here's how we're gonna work this out yeah and i loved it yeah she sticks to her guns but does still like admit that yes there are things that we probably need to take into account. Mm -hmm. I just loved a lot of the little moments with the Daylight Warriors that sort of uh, exemplify how they do sort of have their paws in two worlds. There's a really great moment in the beginning that Ebony Claw, one of the Daylight Warriors, wraps moss around the bell on her collar so that she can hunt and patrol without alerting the prey. And I just loved, like, the ingenuity of the cats in this book Uh, is verges on the supernatural we'll get there (laughs) but i'm obsessed with all of it i think there was even a moment that i was like she says we're not like going to allow ourselves to be sold to the highest bidder and i'm like okay (laughs) you don't know what that means what how do you know what a bid is yeah how do you know what auctions are do you have anything else before uh the toy story plot (laughs) i just i just want to talk about the toy story plot and the uh two-leg kit rescue i have (laughs) to talk about them (laughs) because the way these fucking cats interact with people in this book. Oh my god. I think I would fully believe myself to be losing my mind. I think I would think I was like having a psychotic break, probably. That's like fucking dog shit. Not like <laughs> dog shit as in like this is dog shit, but like it's shit dogs do. <laughs> Shit dogs do. <laughs> like with the with with the rescue of the child. Oh my god. Like, the- Timmy's stuck in the wild kind of shit. Like mm-hmm. cat don't do that. Cat don't do that. Oh my god. It was just Kit just <laughs> I I'm just gonna read out the note that I wrote. Please. <laughs> Can you fucking imagine your daughter goes missing and then a cat shows up with her hat and you go outside with the cat and the cat leads you to a scrunchie that leads you to a hanky, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end of the trail, the same cat is there calling you to your missing child. Can you imagine if that happened to you in real life? That is what happens in this book. And I was just thinking the whole time, as I do all the time in these books, whenever the cats do some shit that I'm like, if I was a human and I was viewing the cats doing this shit, I would be scared that the cats (laughs) were were going to like fucking take over. Uh, (laughs) This is incredible. They... They lay a trail. Mm -hmm. They get in the backpack and they're like, okay, we're going to take all of this girl's shit. We're going to make a trail because humans won't come with us. 
when we talk to them. I do I do really want to hit on uh, Snookpaw at one point is like talking to his humans to distract so that Billy Storm and Leafstar can get out of the house. And he goes over to them and meows really loudly. Oh, I've missed you. Where did you go? Stroke my ears. I'm feeling better now. And I just love to That's... think about that being the thing that like my cat says to me when I come in the house. Honestly, that's Zelda whenever Eric and I are gone for like more than a day. Shit, more than a few hours. If I come back after running errands for like half a day, I will come back in and she'll be like, ew, ew. I'm like, girl, she's, I'm not going to abandon you. She's telling you all of the things that happened in her day. Yeah, she's telling me all about the bird drama. We we jumped forward slightly to the the rescue of the child, but I got to go back for a moment. I cannot stress enough that the thing that these cats do with this abusive <laughs> man in this little cabin is like they drag a bunch of dry sticks in front of his door so that he'll trip when he opens it. They like position themselves in specific ways and make eerie meows and like spooky wailing sounds to scare him. They specifically like creep out from the shadows to like surround him at his doorway and like stare directly at him. It is literally the scene from mm. Toy Story, from the first Toy Story, where they they all come alive and like fuck with Sid. <laughs> It's really, it really is. It's just that. And I was just, it was incredible. It was incredible. It was incredible <laughs> that this is a thing that exists. Yeah, I truly, I was just like, sure, this is happening. It, this might as well happen. They, they like draw maps in the dirt. In, and I think that they've done that in previous books too. But yeah. but um, it felt just like especially prevalent here. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh borders on the nonsensical but, honestly and truly like this is not some <laughs> this is not some shit that cats could ever do um but just the fact like i just love the wild swing that they took that was like what we're going to do is the cats are going to really fuck up psychologically torture this really man. psychologically torture one specific human being mm -hmm. who admittedly seems like he probably deserved it cuz he was he oh, was 100%. deeply abusive to those cats um, but just like, even, even like, that's the thing they say, you know, like s stick is like, you can't fight a human, but you can make them scared. Like, okay, <laughs> that's what we're doing today, I guess. Feels like somebody must have like, someone the errands know must have a deep fear of cats just for that line. Oh, so, Scout, you look like you are getting red in the face from <laughs> laughter. <laughs> I am. I'm so warm. Oh, it's just so much. It's so much. It is. Wow. Do you have anything else until before we move into the uh, the end? No, I just want to talk about the end. Yeah, I did want to point. I pointed out. I noticed it, and I was like, "Hey, we got a TNR." Um, it's, we did. It's not a, a clan cat. It was a loner that lives in the two leg place. But we did get a cat that was. Uh, trapped neutered returned to and they were like you smell different bro you smell weird bro you smell weird and he was like hey <laughs> hey don't say that about me and they're all like yeah he's gonna get fat and lazy and i'm like you know what though true <laughs> before we get into the sort of bulk of this how did you feel about the non-linear narrative in general for this book it took me by surprise mm -hmm. You know, usually when there is a flashback or POV change, there is something to indicate that uh, other than immediately throwing you into someone else's point of view. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it was, I mean, like I got used to it. It just didn't feel like it always tracked with me. Like, oh, we're suddenly switching over to this point of well, view. Well, it was always on a chapter break, right? It was. Yeah. But still. But it fact still was like, you know... I, you know, even with this physical copy, like maybe a different cat on the chapter yeah. thing would have been helpful. Like, I mean, it took me best. I'm, I wasn't it, I was pretty much able to, to follow to grasp it. Yeah. it. It's not that difficult to grasp it, but it, it did kind of throw me for a second. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is not normally what happens. No, the fact that it was not only a different perspective, which in the Aaron Corner, I'll get to this, but this is the only super edition so far to have perspective split like this but also that it was like past and 
future or Mm -hmm. like past and present was really interesting. And I wasn't like, I went back and forth on it. I think in the end, what I sort of settled on was that I, I think the thing that I settled on really is that I would have liked this book better without Stick's whole story. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think that it's the weakest part. Like, it's fine, but it does not, like... It doesn't feel I like there's really, like, enough of the chapters for you to really sit with and feel as though you have, like, a deep connection to Stick. Also, Stick is, like, just... He's so, like, annoying in the in the flashback chapters. He's... He's so... He's not likable in his own head. Yeah. Like, it would be different if, like, reading those chapters, you were like, oh, yeah, I feel for this guy. But, like... I don't feel for him. I don't. <laughs> like, he he's he keeps talking about how, like, oh, I want my daughter back. But, like, he does not show any affection towards her. No, and he does not show any attempts to understand what she's going through and he does not show uh that he listens to any of the people any of the other cats around him who are telling him you're handling this badly and he barely shows remorse for what he does in the end which is kill his own daughter yeah and like the fact that he spent all that time with them and even still in this fight like Going up to it, Leafstar was like, we are just going to scare them. We are not here to kill anybody. And they are actively like getting this queen with her kits away from the battle. And still she gets fucking killed. Yeah. I don't know. It just feels like such a waste to have them be with the clan for so long if they are not actually going to learn it in practice. Like there's, you know, a whole thing of like, oh, well, Cora gets it and she'll teach them the right way to be once we leave. But it's like, no, if the point was for Sky Clan to teach them how to like be respectful cats and learn how to like coexist, then that should have happened in the fight, not been hinted at happening afterwards. Yeah. Uh, that was the that was the thing that I that I think frustrated me the most about the wrap up is how they basically were like Leafstar said one final thing and was like they'll figure it out and they just left. Right. Uh, that is so just like uncharacteristic for the books even to me. Like that it's just sort of like, well, I guess this conflict is done even though like we're still yeah. in the middle of the battlefield. Right. Yeah, it just I don't know. It felt it didn't it took so long for them to actually tell her why they were there that it just feels like it was rushed. Mm -hmm. And then also like Sharp Claw's whole explanation at the end of the book for like, well, I was just trying to make sure that you really were strong in your convictions. Like, I think he means it genuinely, but that is very much some shit that like some reply guy says to you uh, when you call him out on some bullshit he was doing. Yeah. I don't think that Leafstar ever came down on Sharp Claw hard enough for uh, like how much he was really genuinely like annoyingly undermining her throughout most of this book. For real. And I think there were there were moments where I was also like Leafstar, you got to like grow a spine with Sharp Claw for some of this stuff. Yeah. Though I think that it, it, I don't really hold it against Leafstar herself because it felt more like plot contrivance stuff. Like we've talked a lot before about how mm-hmm. sometimes characters in these books do things and it's like, okay, well, they're doing that clearly not because it's a character flaw, but because it is like a plot flaw. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was uh, this whole, yeah, this whole ending of them going and it was so fast. And it was over and they left. And it like there was it no... It was over and they left. And and like that's basically that's the end of the book. There's like one conversation that Leafstar has. And we don't even get to see like the conversation with her and Billy Storm, which I w- would have really liked to, to see. But yeah, like I think it's kind of fun to leave it on like, OK, you know what's going to ha- like, you know, you know what's going to happen. What's going to happen is they're going to get together. But mm-hmm. I still I really liked their whole dynamic. And I really actually wanted more of that in the book, I think. Yeah. Because I think it's really, I think that's so interesting to have the leader of this clan, this like revived clan fall in love with a cat that still lives with house cats. And like that is a relationship that works. There was a lot of untapped potential in the book. I agree. Around that, which is too bad because like I said, the book was doing a lot of things really well, but it got so it, it all got wrapped up in like, if you're a leader, you can't have kids like it came down to a mother thing again. Mm-hmm. When she specifically says at one point, like who said anything about kids? I just want to have a husband. 
Yeah, she's like, I don't need kits. I just want to have like, I just want to have my man. I just want, I just want to have a boyfriend. Yeah. Normalize having just a spouse and no children in the Warrior Cats books, please. <laughs> Agreed. We will actually get a character later that is all about that. Good. Uh, I mean, we have, you know, Ravenpaw as well. That's he true. He has a spouse and no children. That's true. I feel like if they had the chance to adopt, they might. Yeah. I think Ravenpaw would want a kid. I don't know that Barley would. Yeah. Yeah. Barley's just like, oh my God, a kid. kids are sticky. <laughs> kids are sticky. I've, yeah. Fucking yeah. <laughs> um anyways yeah uh overall like obviously we've talked about this this book for quite a while this is getting to be a, mm -hmm. a, a nice fun hefty episode i there was so much about this book that i really loved and it was just so disappointing that the ending felt so nothing not yeah yeah but do you want to take us uh to the air and corner yeah i'll take us to the air in the corner we kind of we kind of went over this uh, already with with the speaking about Ravenpaw's name and everything, but yeah, according to Cherith Baldry in Aaron Hunter Chat Four, I don't think Ravenpaw will ever get a warrior name, but I don't think he minds. That kind of goes along more with your read of it, Jill. But I still feel like a lot of times the Aarons say that just because they don't want to think about what his name would be. <laughs> And, and I think that comes from specifically Vicky being like, well, once I decided that he was going to leave the clan, I just didn't think of a name for him. Vicky, come on. I mean, Vicky is the one who gave us frost fur and snow fur in like the same book. So uh, Sky Clan's Destiny, which was, uh, by the way, written by Cherith Baldry. Uh, is the only super edition with a split POV that appears outside of the prologue. Most of them will have some or some of them, at least, will have a different cat in the prologue. Um, and we had Ancient Sky Clan here in the prologue, which I liked. That was a fine prologue. It didn't really like it set up the prophecy that Leafstar receives. But other than that, I didn't have like there wasn't a lot of, yeah. of Star Clan or Ancient Sky Clan stuff in here. Uh, so this is the only super edition that has the split POV like this. Uh, it's also the only one not named after a singular cat. And we're up to 18 super editions now, I think. Wow. Yeah. So um, it's cool that this is such a unique one. And as we discussed, I think they did a lot of really great, cool things in this super edition. And I wish more of them sort of was out there in the weird and interesting ways that this one was. We touched on this last episode. I forgot to put a note in here this episode, but I personally, I know you you aren't big on it. I personally uh, think it's really fun the way that they do the the Daylight Warrior names, where it is their house cat name with then a suffix on it. Um, mm -hmm. They sound so stupid, but also it's just like, I think that in the context of that these are cats who are trying to sort of hold these two different cat cultures and coexist within both of them and sort of deal with that mixing of two very different worlds. I think it's fun that they sort of hold on to that thing that very much ties them to like their humans and their house cat life. Yeah, after after reading it, I was a little bit more soft on it, but I still don't care for it. <laughs> That's so valid. Yeah, I mean, this is really I touched on this. Uh, this is like me opinion stuff. There wasn't too much to find by way of like fun facts for Sky Clan's Destiny uh, or like trivia and stuff. So I think that's about that's about it. I mean, really, this is what I have. I have a note here, but it's all the stuff that I said already about how I feel about Sky Clan's Destiny, which is that mm -hmm. I really liked it until the end. And the end was really deflationary and like anticlimactic and unsatisfying. And that's disappointing. But I think that the positives I feel about the rest of the book generally outweigh the negatives I feel about the ending. And I, after a few weeks of sitting with it since I finished it, I'm feeling pretty high on it overall. That's good. Yeah. And uh, just to just to be uh, clear, because I, I don't think I said it before, but Ravenpaw's Path, written by uh, Dan Jolly again, another another Dan Jolly joint. James L. Barry, we talked about him. Sky Clan's Destiny was Cherith Baldry. We've been getting a good, uh, good mixture of like a lot of different authors here in sort of the post prophecies begin, pre new prophecy zone. Uh, just mm -hmm. a just a good good time. Uh, that's it. Let's uh, let's talk about sharing tongues. Yeah, I don't have a ton on this actually. So after our we had some discussion in the Discord about cat names recently and 
as you rightfully called me out, I was on, I went to a forum <laughs> to find information on this. And it made me realize, like, I've really not been going to, like, try and dig for forums because, you know, I kind of assumed most of them have probably been like the servers have probably been right. shut down, mm -hmm. if we're being honest. Um, but the Warrior Cats RP forums is still up. Oh, that's incredible. And so is uh, some Neo Seeker forums. So I did find a couple about SkyClan's Destiny. And it seems like SkyClan's Destiny overall is sort of one that people are kind of like chill on like nobody f is like this is the best super edition or this is the absolute worst it's mostly like oh yeah it's a chill read mm -hmm. there is a divide on like oh my gosh i can't believe it was slice of life this is so boring versus like oh i'm so glad it's slice of life this is like become my comfort book because i can just like read it and you know it's it's chill read so i think that was a very interesting thing but it does make sense why there's not like a ton about this book is because it doesn't seem like people have a lot of very strong opinions about it <laughs> i'm uh, the only person fine. with strong opinions about this book i mean maybe uh so i did go on to ao3 because as we've talked about before fanfiction.net is uh unusable unusable website unfortunate Apparent so there is a rogue <laughs> there is a rogue in this book called Onion. Oh my god. And there is a cat in the clan called Egg. <laughs> apparently Egg and Onion is a ship. Oh my god. That is tagged on AO3. <laughs> that just cracked me up. It is so fucking funny to see that as a tag. Fucking breakfast food breakfast ass ship. Breakfast food ass ship. They're gonna have a kid named Waffle and Pancakes. Fuck. Like, what the fuck? Oh, it's so funny. It was so funny. The cat being named Egg and then also just like being like, I just like Egg. I'm just gonna keep Egg if that's okay. I won't be <laughs> Eggpaw. I just wanna be Egg. I have a note that I didn't copy into the document, but it was just the word Egg and then like 20 question marks. It's so silly. Um, <laughs> Who named him Egg? Egg. <laughs> uh, Sky Clan's Destiny only has five fix tagged. There is a drama that was uh, that did spark my interest is a canon divergence, meaning takes what is canon and kind of sets a point where it diverges and goes with what the author is wanting to write rather than what is canon. Uh, where instead of mentoring just Frecklepaw, Echo Song decides to teach as many cats as she can slash want to learn again. Just saying, Sky Clan knows what's knows what they're about. Sky Clan knows um, what they're about. <laughs> there's a fake. I didn't read it, but there was a Leaf Star and Billy Storm one where it also is Leaf Star talking to Echo Song because Echo Song is like, "Oh my God, you're pregnant," and one of the tags is discussion of abortion, and I'm like, "Oh my fucking god!" Oh god! In the cat with the cats. Uh huh. Took me out. There are 10 works for Leaf Star and Billy Storm as a ship. Uh, Billy Storm himself only has 10 fix. Oops. <laughs> There's <laughs> one about Leaf Star cheating on him with Sharp Claw. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. You know, we love on this podcast, you know, we love a leader and deputy situation. This is not the they, one. I do not see them romantic at all. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Sharp Claw does have 26. A uh, fixed tag for him, though. Good yeah. for him. More than Billy Storm. Um, yeah, sorry, Billy Storm. He's getting, he's getting cuckolded ab about uh, like being a, a fan favorite. <laughs> Barley and Ravenpaw as a ship has a hundred and fifty two fix on Ao three. Let's go. Which Is that the, the I, highest one? It has I, to be right. I think it's higher than Firestar and Sandstorm. I'm gonna go double check real quick. No, Firestar and Sandstorm have double the amount. They have ah, 312. Damn. But like, that's up there. That is that is definitely up there. Usually we for, are running on like, there's 12 to 25 fix. Yeah, for a series with so many goddamn characters, 152 specifically about your ship. That's big. That's incredible. That's big. And also we have to remember that AO3 is a is more not, recent... Yeah website than yeah like, the most the most uh far back dated fic on ao3 for warriors is 2013 so like there's a trove of stuff on like wattpad and mm -hmm. fanfiction.net that is just unsearchable the ancient unsearchable texts yeah oh no wait 2016 seems to be 
Okay, yeah. May 2016 is the earliest one posted on oh, wow. AO3. That's really recent. That Yeah. Like, in, in the grand scheme of things. I mean, yeah. It's... I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's a song fic. Fuck. What does that mean? Oh, okay, so song fic. Oh, is that when they, like, write... The, they take the lyrics and, like, for every lyric line there is a paragraph or something? Usually, like, a stanza, yeah. Gotcha. I use... I... Look... When I was younger, I did write some song fix. It happens. We all go through it. I try to say cringe is dead. This does. That you, won't, you won't catch me writing a song <laughs> fix in the year of our Lord 2024. It does. It does feel kind of like the writer equivalent of. An animatic. Yeah. Of, of like an animatic. Yeah. But there is something. Uh, Slightly crin- cringe about obviously it. Obviously cringe is dead, but it is more cringe than an animatic. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know I, what it is. Yeah. Well, I think sometimes it's a bad rap because I've I have I have read some where they don't just put the song lyrics in there, they have the characters speaking the song lyrics as okay. part of the dialogue. Guys, we gotta <laughs> Again, if that floats your boat, hell yeah, dude. Absolutely. It does not float mine personally. Mm-hmm. But yes, yeah, so Barley and Ravenpaw, lots of fix. Uh, only one fic for the Ravenpaws Path series. Rip. Barley has 183 fics. Ravenpaw has 428. Let's go. And there Ravenpaw are 100... himself does have more than Firestar and Sandstorm. Yes. Uh, there are 192 fics uh, for Sky Clan specifically, but as we will see, we are not done with Sky Clan. Thank no, they're gonna come. They're gonna come back in a big way. Uh, though it will be a while. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, the first one that I posted from... Okay, yeah, this is from the Ravenpaw nov- uh, novella. It's really cute, though. <laughs> but I figured since it took place during this moment, mm-hmm. or during this, like, time period, we could we could talk about it. Uh, apparently, I guess this is a flashback of uh, Squirrel Kit and... This art is uh, so cute. It this is. Art is. Squirrel is- Kit and Ravenpaw interacting when he's there. Uh, with Barley. And she's like, do you and Barley have kids? And Ravenpaw's like, uh, no. <laughs> I love it so much. And this art oh is God. just like tooth achingly cute. It is this tiny, roundest fucking squirrel kit you've ever seen in your life. It's and so an cute. equally round Ravenpaw. I'm obsessed with it. I also found this very fun uh, anthro art. Of yes, Barley I love and these cowboys. As cowboys. And Ravenpaw is like pushing a wheelbarrow. He's this uh, skeinty little boy. Uh, and he's giving Barley like a, a nice little look. And he's got his fancy little cowboy outfit. And Barley is laying on the hail, uh, hay bales. And he's all sprawled out. And he's so cute. He's so cute. His tummy's sticking out. His he's, tummy's sticking out. His toe beans are all spread. And he's got one black toe and then three white toes yeah he's got like a little mustache it's great it's really it's really nice uh and then i just linked the raven paws path uh tumblr search because there's just so many cute little barleys yeah and raven paws and like little ship arts of them there's this one that's got barley with heterochromia and a little pride bandana yes that one's really cute i love that so many of them have a pride bandana on him it's so cute just a lot of fun little character designs i just love how fluffy everybody makes barley he's so poofy like he is he is fluffy but like they take the fluff and they maximize they it. really do they make him so fluffy which is perfect mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a blog called sheep review and somebody submitted the sheep from warriors raven paws path uh, it was rated five out of five sheep what a distinguished gentle sheep very delightfully colored and soft would put my hand in the fleece and it would be soft and warm obsessed with this yeah wow. love that uh i should follow sheep review fan favorite harrier tail uh did some really lovely landscapes oh. uh, for sky clan these rule yeah uh of the gorge uh with the river of the gorge looking up to the sky of cloud star in like this 
misty forest. It's so cool. I love Harrier Tales stuff. Harrier Tales stuff is great. The caption so, so just beautiful. saying someone lived here is like so evocative. Yeah, it's great. 10 out of 10 stuff. Uh, someone called True Tooth Baby Girl. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that. That's me. I ghost wrote that. Yeah. Didn't find many AMVs actually. There is a really cute looking Ravenpaw and Barley one uh, set to Somewhere Only We Know, but it is for his novella. So I did not uh, I did not watch that because I want to go in mostly blind to that. Oh, also unrelated, but I was going through the notifications. I really need to be better about updating the Tumblr, guys. <laughs> Y'all need to start yelling at me for this. <laughs> Somebody, we, we mentioned a post on the podcast, I guess, several episodes ago. I feel like this had to be Back really in, early. Into the wild. I think it was Into the Wild. Mm, mm-hmm. We mentioned a post, we re reblogged the post, and the person, somebody <laughs> uh, reblogged it back from us was like, I was listening to this podcast while taking a bath, the narrators mentioned this post, and I laughed, so I got back into Warriors after 15 years. Uh, and I just want to say Bat Joy on Tumblr, thank you so much. Thank you, Bat Joy on Tumblr. Uh, uh, so glad that you enjoyed this, this little post. I'm going to be better about getting on Tumblr because I love reading the tags that people leave on things. That's so. the best thing about Tumblr. It really is. The Tumblr tags. It's the best. That's it's so fun to like go into the Warriors tag too and just like see the unhinged shit people say in the tags. It's great. <laughs> uh, it's great. But that's really all I've got for sharing tongues this week. Hell yeah. That's a great sharing tongue segment. Gay rights. Gay rights. Warrior Cat of the Week time? I think so, yeah. All right. Did you pick one or two this week? I picked, do I remember? I picked two. Okay, I also picked two. All right. Uh, for Ravenpaw's Path, I picked Violet, Barley's sister. Ooh, nice. Um, I really liked the, like, the scenes between her and Barley. I liked how spunky she was. She reminded me uh, a lot of Princess, Firestar's sister, in a lot of ways. Um, she was just a great, like, little bit of joy and uh, tenacity sort of inserted into the story. And it was really cool to see Barley have a connection to his past that wasn't uh, entirely Horrible. negative. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for Sky Clan's Destiny, it had to be Shrewtooth. Nice. I loved that weirdo. He is just the perfect wet meow meow boy for me. I love those picks. Very good. Thank you. What about you? For once, we don't have we don't have any overlap on our <gasps> picks. Incredible. I know. Uh, I'm basic for Ravenpaw's path. I picked Ravenpaw. <laughs> that makes sense. Because, you know, he's my guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's my little, my little man. Uh, and for SkyClan's Destiny, I actually picked Billy Storm. I, this makes me so happy because I really, let, we didn't talk about it a lot, but I loved Billy Storm too. It was just that Shrewtooth like beat it out for me, but I, yeah. I really enjoyed Billy Storm too. I'm happy to see him represented here. And like for it only being the course of this book, like I found their romance to be believable. Like yeah. I really enjoyed, like he's very clearly a cat that she like respects and leans on the, like his opinion. And when they have like their little falling out, it's very clear like how much she is wanting to be like, you know, Leafstar is like, I'm not going to compromise myself just to make him happy again. But also I miss him. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, Billy Storm has his own little arc where he's like, you know what? You were right. Like, I do think we both had good points. Uh, but like, I I was not entirely correct either. And I just think he was a really fun character. I, I really enjoyed him. Yeah. And I think he he's a really good, like, narrative foil to Sharpclaw mm -hmm. as like an advisor to Leafstar. Yeah, the whole scene where Billy Storm takes Leafstar to visit Snookpaw and then they have to yeah. like make a break for it. And he is so anxious that and like worried about, oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I put you in danger. And like, that's really the first moment that we uh, really get to see like Billy Storm's affection in a mm -hmm. in a more overt way in the in the text. I loved that. And I, I really like to how much. She constantly associates him with, like, having fun. Yeah! She's always like, oh, man, 
I just had so much fun with him. Like it was adventuring and it was great and it was exciting. And then she's like, this would be a lot more fun if Billy Storm was here. I'm like, yeah, girl, because he's your like partner in crime. He's yeah. like a, a an adventuring bud. I really enjoyed him. I think he was a great character. He was great. But yeah, I think uh, I think that about does it. Man, this was a, a chonky one, huh? It did end up being a chonky one. We have a prophecy. <gasps> we have a prophecy. As thunder, river, wind, and shadow adjust to change, so too our paws are guided down new paths. Look to the stars, as they will always light your way. Listeners, you know, Star Clan just like appeared to me in my dreams last night and told me that. So I don't quite know what it means yet, but um, we'll figure it out together, I think. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to ruminate on that one together. We'll figure it out. I think we got a lot of smart folks in the Discord. I think we can figure it out together if we crowdsource it. Uh, Speaking of, why don't you take us out? If you have thoughts, opinions, questions, or memes to share with us, you can write to us at pawsandclawspod at gmail.com. That's paws, as in what a cat has, claws, as in the part of speech, pod, as in podcast. We are also on Twitter and Blue Sky at Paws and Claws, and on Tumblr at Paws Claws Pod. Listeners who are 18 years and older can come join us on Discord, which will be linked in the show notes. You can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, or Blue Sky at Humble Goat, and you can see the art that I do, including our podcast cover art, at scoutwilkinson.myportfolio.com. And you can find me on Twitter at plot underscore twists, on Blue Sky at plot hyphen twists, or on Tumblr at antique hyphen romantic. Our next episode will be out in two weeks, where we will discuss the new prophecy, book one, Midnight. New season, baby! New season, baby! Read along by buying the book from a local bookstore, or checking out a copy from your local library. Until then, dear listeners, may Star Clan guide your paws.